Okay, section 9.1 is on multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Um, a rational expression is a quotient of two polynomials, so you could have something like 5 over x, x squared minus 9 over x plus 3, etc. So you just have something over another thing. It says we simplify rational expressions just the, the, the same way that we simplify easy fractions. So if you have 15 over 24, think about how you simplify 15 over 24. So you think about the factors of 15, it breaks into 3 and 5, and you think if there's any common factors in 24, so 24 breaks into 3 and 8. So sometimes you write this down, sometimes you do it in your head, but you say I'm going to divide by 3 on the top and the bottom, and that's how you just get 5 eighths. Now 5 eighths doesn't simplify anymore, so that's as far down as you go, so your answer is just 5 eighths. Okay, so same thing for polynomials. So it so says simplify the following expressions and identify any x values for which the expressions are undefined. All right, when I say identify any x values for which the expressions are undefined, I'm just saying right now, looking at those quotients, uh, what, would you, what one would give you undefined? So what number gives you zero in the denominator? So in this original one, what gives you zero in your denominator? If x is what? Yeah, Dana. Zero, right? So we're going to say undefined when x equals zero. Now, I don't ask you that on your homework. Um, it's just something later on when we're graphing these things, it's going to be important. Because on our graph, we're going to have like some kind of normal curve, but then at those particular points, we're going to have a hole. So it's going to be not filled in at those points. So that's why it's important. Okay. So let's go ahead and reduce. So if I have 10x to the 8th over 6x to the 4th, 10 is 2 times 5. And then x to the 8th, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Obviously, you're not going to do that on each one. 6 is 2 times 3. And then you have 1, 2, 3, 4 x's. So we can reduce by common factors on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to have 4 x's on top cancel with 4 x's on bottom. And then we have twos cancel on the top and the bottom. So your final answer is 5. There's 4 x's left on top, so x to the 4th over 3. OK, number 2. This is my big pet peeve in Algebra 2. So this is one of my big ones. You know how you know, one of my pet peeves is when people just bring the squared into both pieces and they don't actually foil. This is another huge one. All right, every time I get these tests, people always try to cancel the x's, the x squareds, cancel the x's, and then they say their answer is negative 2 over 2 minus 3. That's not how that works. You can only cancel things if you have factors. Just like with numbers, if you have 1 plus 2 over 1 plus 3, that answer isn't 2 thirds. You can't just cancel the ones. Okay, does that make sense? So you can't cancel x's like that. You need to factor everything. Okay, so when I factor, I'm going to factor the top and I'm going to factor the bottom. So I need x and x. My last terms need to multiply to be negative 2, and my outer and inner terms need to combine to be positive x. So I need negative 1 and plus 2. On the bottom, I need x and x. You can kind of get a clue from the top a lot of times if you know things are going to reduce. So I'm probably going to need that negative 1 and then plus 3 to multiply to be negative 3. Check it, the outer and inner terms. So outer is 3x, inner is negative 1x. So that does work. Okay, now that you've broken it into its factors, just like with numbers, now is when you can cancel. So now the x minus 1, that whole factor, cancels with x minus 1 on the bottom. So your answer is just x plus 2 over x plus 3. Okay, so some people understand all of those steps, and they get x plus 2 over x plus 3, and then they do that thing I was talking about where they cancel the x's. Okay, same thing. You can't cancel the x's there. It's not 2 thirds. Your answer is x plus 2 over x plus 3. All right, so this next one, oh, I guess we need to say where it's undefined. So in our original expression, so this one right up here, what made the denominator equal to 0? So what makes it undefined? One, and then what else? Yep. 
So x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. All right, so like I said, you don't have to do that on your homework, but for now we'll talk about it. All right, next one. How do I factor that numerator? Yeah, you can pull out an x. And Elizabeth's noticing something. She wants to pull out a whole negative x all at once. Because now when you pull out a negative x, this becomes negative 4 and then plus x. See how if you multiply the negative x back in, you get positive 4x minus x squared. All right, when you factor the bottom, you need x and x. You need negative 4 and plus 2. Okay, so the, they don't quite look the same. You have x minus 4, and then you have negative, x, or negative 4 plus x, but they are the same, right? Rewrite in the other order. Do the x first. You'd have x minus 4. Okay, so now you can see that the x minus 4s do cancel. So you get negative x over x plus 2. Okay, when was your original undefined? Yep, negative 2. And what was the other one? 4, right. Okay, I do want to mention one thing. Let's say you had done this problem and only pulled out an x, so you didn't notice that Elizabeth noticed. Um, if you pull out an x, that means you would have uh, 4 minus x on the top, and the bottom would be x minus 4. So if you see that, um, that they look almost exactly the same, only the numbers are switched. Like if you had 5 minus x and x minus 5 or something. Um, you can cancel them. They're just opposite each other, so put a negative out front. So you can kind of remember that trick. Or you could pull out a negative from that term and do it a lot more. Okay. So as you can also multiply rational expressions just like fractions. Uh, with fractions, we always reduce as much as possible before multiplying. So if I have 27 over 16 times 24 over 81. So we're going to try to re reduce as much as possible. Okay. So think about factors that are on the top and on the bottom. So like 16 and 24, they're both divisible by 8. That would be the biggest thing that goes into them. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of write out these steps. So 27 was uh, 9 times 3. And 16 is 8 times 2. Have to multiply. And then 24 is 8 times 3, and 81 is 9 times 9. Okay, so when I write it that way, you can see you're dividing by 9 on the top and the bottom. You're dividing by 8 on the top and the bottom. Is there anything else that reduces? Yeah, we have 9 over 18, so it's going to reduce down. So do you guys see you have 3 and 3? That makes 9, so 9 is going to cancel with 9 on the bottom. So when you do that, only on, the only thing on the top is 1. It's like you multiply by 1, so I have 1 over 2. Yeah, Anthony? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what we're doing. I, I just didn't think most people knew um, that 27 went into 81 evenly. But you're right, it would be 1 and 3, right? Good. All right, so we're going to do the same kind of thing with polynomials. So we're going to try to cancel as much as possible before we multiply out our polynomials because we don't want to have big, huge, long polynomials. Okay, so that's what these steps say. So it says factor numerators and denominators completely, cancel out common factors, multiply your numerators, multiply your denominators, Make sure there's no other common factors besides 1. OK, so are we ready? So we see, let's see, we have 3 and 9. They reduce and make 3. And I have 10 and 2. They make 5 and 1. OK, I'm going to actually, let's, let's write what we have now. What's that, y to the seventh? Is that what that says? Mine's a little blurry.
Okay, so let's look at just our individual. Oh, uh, you have five x. Oh, thank you. Okay, so let's look at our individual um, terms. So I have x to the fifth and x cubed. So think about how those would reduce. So I have five on top, three on bottom. So I'm going to end up with two on top. Okay, then I have y cubed over y to the seventh. So that's going to give me four left on the bottom, right? All right, so we'll kind of go through each one of these. So I have x cubed and x squared. So the x squared is going to be gone. And then I'm going to have x left on the top. And then the last one is y to the fourth over y to the fifth. Cancel. You'll leave uh, one y on the bottom. You guys all understand that now? I remember when you guys took the test, you didn't like those, but I think now you understand them. All right, so now when I multiply across, I have x squared, I have a 5, and I have x. So that's 5x to the third. And then on the bottom, I have y to the fourth times 3 times a y. So that's 3y to the fifth. Okay, so that should be your answer in the end. Let me see where we're at with time. <coughs> we can do one more. Okay. All right, so I have x minus 3 over 4x plus 20, and then I have x plus 5 over x squared minus 9. This is where the biggest mistake comes from. So on the, on the test, whenever I grade these, this is the biggest mistake. So people will look at that, and they won't realize that it factors. What was that, Anthony? Yeah, take out a 4, right. So that was the biggest mistake. So a lot of people will look at that and they won't know what factors, and then they'll just keep it, and they'll have huge polynomials they're trying to multiply. So pull out the 4. Now you can see that you have the x plus 5 on the top, right? Oh, you were saying 1 4. I see what you're saying. All right, now x squared minus 9 is x plus 3 times x minus 3. So you've now factored all of the numerators, all of the denominators, so you're ready to cancel. So the x minus 3's on top and bottom cancel. The x plus 5's on the top and the bottom cancel. So I have just 1 on top, because everything's canceled, so there's a placeholder of 1. Over 4 times x plus 3. So you can write it like that. Or you can say 1 over 4x plus 12. So it doesn't matter. Either way. So